welcome to another edition of the Left Hand Path. Here we discuss issues and topics relating to metaphysics, astrology, and astrotheology. The word sinister comes from the Latin for left hand, with a basic understanding of Kabbalah and astrological principles we can shed light on the occult forces underpinning the globalization project exposing its sinister progression towards the left-hand path. Believing he was the only true god of the material realm, Yaldabaoth moved away and created other realms and subservient archons for himself. He was described as an artificial, non-organic life form with machine-like qualities. Humanity is at an unprecedented crossroads, a turning point in history in which it may permanently lose its spiritual connection to the Creator Consciousness. A prospect of such alarming magnitude, the consequences of which could be disastrous for all of humanity for a very long time. Those in control of this latest bout of globalization are pushing for, at an alarming rate, artificial intelligence, which will become the foundation and core of their brave new utopian collective, a digital control grid linking every man, woman and child up to their new god in the form of artificial intelligence, a feat which, from all accounts of official lineal history, has never occurred before. The majority of people are so wrapped up with the day-to-day -day task of making ends meet that they are powerless to stop this all-pervasive artificial control grid consuming them. Most people are under the illusion that their political representatives have all the necessary information to make well-informed decisions on their behalf, believing that those decisions have humanity's overall best interests at heart. What many people don't realise is that there has been an ongoing battle between the spiritual creator god at the centre of the Pleroma and the material god or Demiurge, ever since time began. Those of us alive now are here to witness the next round, where the Demiurge appears to be gaining ground over the Creator. According to Muslim scripture, the false messiah, Antichrist, Masi Ad-Dajjal, shall appear with great powers as a one-eyed man with his right eye blind and deformed like a grape. Although believers will not be deceived, he will claim to be God and to hold the keys to heaven and hell, leading many people astray. In reality, his heaven is hell, and his hell is rapidly coming to our earthly realm. The Dajjal will be followed by 70,000 Jews of Isfahan, a city in Iran, wearing Persian shawls. This is one of the major signs to appear prior to Judgment Day from the perspective of Muslim eschatology. The automation of society has been underway for a very long time slowly detaching humanity from their hands-on involvement over a system of control which they will ultimately become slaves to. 
humanity has essentially been building its own open-air prison for generations, being steered covertly by hidden political agendas far out of the common man's reach. The only thing which held back absolute control over humanity in the past was the level of technology available. Full automation was never possible before, as various levels of human involvement was always necessary to keep whatever technology they had in operation. However, now we have reached a tipping point where the level and speed of technological advancements are so breathtaking we are either at a point or not far off when the machines will not only think for themselves but will be able to maintain and evolve themselves. We truly are entering the realms of the Terminator. Those of us who lived prior to the start of the computer age in the 1980s, where human interaction was necessary to perform almost every task imaginable, occasionally find ourselves in today's world out of place, out of touch, even when tackling some of the most basic automated procedures, tasks which once took minutes through human interaction, can now take hours of frustrating tail chasing when trying to navigate automated online purchasing procedures. Void of the most basic human contact, we are slowly detaching ourselves from the mechanisms which control us. Although the majority of those born post-1990, have been socially engineered to accept that an overriding artificial intelligence is a necessary step in the right direction of progress. They are oblivious to the possibility that they are being groomed and conditioned to accept a society ruled by an integrated technological control grid with possible sinister motives. When people give up their independence within an interactive community of proactive human participants to alternatively embrace a society of individual automatons serving an artificially created management system their social cohesive skills will deteriorate to a point where the purpose of their overall existence comes into question. What the technocrats and their followers fail to appreciate is that many people are not just human beings seeking a spiritual dimension, but spiritual beings having a human experience and to dilute traditional three-dimensional ways in which we interact could ultimately trap us within a controlling web of artificial intelligence, undermining our natural connection to universal spiritual consciousness, essentially pulling us further away from the Creator. Five G is the fifth generation of digital cellular network technology designed to improve all forms of digital communication with greater speed when accessing the internet. Planned to be fully operational by 2021. To achieve this, a wider spectrum of bandwidths are being made available for transmitting and receiving data, utilizing higher frequencies within the lower realms of the infrared spectrum, 
known as microwaves. Although these frequencies are generally considered safe when emitting non-ionizing radiation, the potential for biological and cellular damage is becoming a growing concern. While microwave ovens utilize microwave technology to cook food, the level of power used to achieve this is enormous compared to the microwaves used within 5G technology. However, the accumulative and long-term effects on human health is unknown. It is already well documented in scientific research papers that the existing technology of 3 and 4G have already contributed to a number of health issues. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. This is no longer a subject for debate. When you look at PubMed and the peer review literature, these effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question we have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of cognitive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects. 5G is an untested application of a technology that we know is harmful. We know it from the science. In academics, this is called Human Subjects Research. Dr. Sharon Goldberg In my judgment, we already have clear evidence for elevations in brain and other cancers resulting from excessive exposure to mobile phone, Wi-Fi and other sources of electromagnetic fields. There has not been adequate study of the adverse effects of electromagnetic fields in general and there has been almost no study of the specific higher frequencies to be used in 5G. David Carpenter, Professor and Director of the Institute for Health and the Environment, University at Albany. In 1996, a new Telecommunications Act was passed in the United States designed to free up the industry for corporations to compete with one another for business without too much government interference, designed to encourage the rapid development and implementation of new technology concerning telecommunications. No state or local government or instrumentality thereof may regulate the placement, construction and modification of personal wireless service facilities on the basis of the environmental effects of radio frequency emissions to the extent that such facilities comply with the Commission's regulations concerning such emissions. Section 704 of the Telecommunications Act of 1996. We are, as a species, about to undergo an experiment where all of us are essentially being used as guinea pigs for the profits of a handful of individuals running the telecommunications corporations. To roll something out on a global scale without adequate testing is akin to playing Russian roulette with the whole human race, an experiment which we may never recover from. Although the speed of this new generation of technology is attractive, one can't help but suspect the potential and opportunity for abuse by malevolent forces is always a possibility. 
After 5G, we should see 6G, an even more sophisticated technological control grid. 6 is, of course, the number associated with Saturn, the planet of control, restriction, limitation and frustration. When they link humanity with electronic devices through their fleet of satellites, Saturn lights, there will be nowhere to escape and nowhere to hide. This ultimate control grid will no doubt be rolled out in the name of keeping humanity safe as a countermeasure against terrorism and other threats. Dangers created as a mechanism to influence public opinion in the direction required for an endless array of overreaching controls. It is ironic that the first ever geosynchronous satellite broadcast, which took place back in July 1962, carried pictures of Pope John XXIII all around the world. A Saturn light which looked more like the Death Star from Star Wars than the satellites we are used to seeing today. John the Twenty-Third made a momentary appearance on the world's first geosynchronous satellite, Telstar 1, in 1962. Robert Kaiser, A Church in Search of Itself It is important to point out that the global smart grid, which will run in tandem with cyber security technologies, is a grid designed to spy on almost every aspect of our lives, growing exponentially in the country of Israel faster than any other country on the planet. Some analysts have suggested that in a few short years, Israel will be at the centre of all AI surveillance technology throughout the world. A point will come where nothing will happen in this world without the knowledge of the Israeli intelligence services. Israeli's long-standing position as a leader in the global effort to prevent cybercrime remains indisputable. The Times of Israel, cybersecurity investment in Israel surges 47% to over $1 billion in 2018.
our unique individual consciousness interfaces with this physical reality with our five basic senses. These senses are stimulated through various frequencies of electromagnetic energy decoded by our brains. We were designed or have evolved in such a way as to function in harmony with our natural environment. Ever since the birth of man, we have lived in tune with nature's rhythms and cycles, responding to the energetic frequencies emanating from our surroundings together with transits occurring from all the magnificent planets and luminaries gracing our solar system. Lately, human arrogance has decided to submerge every one of us in an artificial ocean of electromagnetic pollution. This, in my opinion, is an attack on human consciousness itself, driving into the very heart of who we are. An artificial reality is being created which could potentially replace our natural subconscious collective which is tethered to the spiritual realm and the creator. I suggest that the overriding objective of this electromagnetic control grid is to cut us off from our sixth and seventh senses together with restricting our connection to the spiritual collective giving us over, hook, line and sinker, to the artificial machine-like god of the underworld, the Demiurge. One has to wonder, where did this rapid expansion of artificial intelligence technology come from? And why are we in such a hurry to promote it as the solution to all our worldly problems. Could it be that human history has been deliberately distorted to hide the existence of an ancient society once ruled by the Demiurge and his Archons, who were indeed the gods of the ancient world, using our human ancestors as slaves and objects of abuse? and amusement. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Genesis 6.4 could it be that the ancient megalithic remains which we see in abundance all over the world are the remains of a once powerful and materialistic civilization brought to an end by a global cataclysm which ultimately reset human consciousness? A cataclysm which gave freedom back to humanity as the Creator had intended. Although the consciousness at the centre of the galaxy is the ultimate power out in this part of the universe, its creation, us, here on Earth, was, in my opinion, intended to have free will. Therefore, it appears that the Creator was never in any hurry to interfere with this evolving project all the way out here at the edge of the galaxy. However, it could be the case that when society is either all good or all bad, that some form of cosmic intervention resets the earth on a biblical scale, allowing humanity to once again reset itself. Plato gives an interesting account of how the Atlanteans, once on a righteous path, deviated 
into materialism and corruption, which ultimately led to their downfall. For many generations, as long as the divine nature lasted in them, they were obedient to the laws, and well affectioned towards the God, whose seed they were, for they possessed true and in every way great spirits, uniting gentleness with wisdom in the various chances of life, and in their intercourse with one another. They despised everything but virtue, caring little for their present state of life, and thinking lightly of the possessions of gold and other property, which seemed only a burden to them. Neither were they intoxicated by luxury, nor did wealth deprive them of their self-control, but they were sober and saw clearly that all these goods are increased by virtue and friendship with one another, whereas by too great regard and respect for them they are lost and friendship with them. By such reflections and by the continuance in them of a divine nature, the qualities which we have described grew and increased among them. But when the divine portion began to fade away, and became diluted, too often and too much, with the mortal admixture, and the human nature got the upper hand, they then, being unable to bear their fortune, behaved unseemingly, and to him who had an eye to see, grew visibly debased for they were losing the fairest of their precious gifts. But to those who had no eye to see the true happiness, they appeared glorious and blessed at the very time when they were full of avarice and unrighteous power. Zeus, the god of gods, who rules according to law and is able to see into such things, perceiving that an honourable race was in a woeful plight, and wanting to inflict punishment on them, that they might be chastened and improved, collected all the gods into their most holy habitation, which, being placed in the centre of the world, beholds all created things, and when he had called them together, he spake as follows. Excerpt from Critias by Plato, circa 400 BC. Edgar Casey, 1877 to 1945. The Sleeping Prophet is one of America's most famous clairvoyants. He became famous for his ability to diagnose illnesses from a sleep-like trance. Throughout his life, he produced over 14,000 psychic readings, much of which was recorded, referenced and stored in a dedicated research library. During many of these readings, he would remote view periods of time throughout human history, going all the way back to the time of Atlantis. He explained that around 210,000 years ago, human consciousness descended into dense matter in a place known as Atlantis to experience a material reality from their basic etheric form. At this time, humanity was thought to be in harmony with nature and closer to the Creator. It is believed that they were illuminated and enlightened beings with a sophisticated society of high technology and etheric tools enabling them 
to perform incredible feats of engineering. However, as time went by, Casey states that the society rebelled against nature to become more egocentric, detaching themselves from their spiritual roots and to develop a hierarchical system of governance. Dark energies began to fragment their once magnificent society, and as they descended into factional fighting, they lost much of their technology along the way. Around 50,000 to 28,000 BC, the great continent of Atlantis broke up into five smaller islands, creating more division and disunity. Again in 28,000 to 22,000 BC, other earth changes submerged two of those islands, leaving only three. This was thought by Casey to be the great deluge mentioned in the Bible. Prior to this, three groups of Atlanteans went out to three separate locations over the earth looking for a place to bury 32 stone tablets containing the history of the human race, now referred to as the Hall of Records. Casey suggested one group buried their records in the Yucatan region of South America. Another was buried in Egypt, and the third was in an unknown location. Finally, around 10,600 BC, what was left of the Atlantis Islands sank due to massive earth changes brought about by the impact of a disintegrating comet, setting off a rise in sea levels and a new ice age. It is also worth pointing out that Casey gave an impression of Lemuria, lost continent in the Pacific Indian Ocean, suggesting the inhabitants were so spiritually in tune with nature that their society advanced in a very different way, allowing them to manipulate some of the most difficult aspects of the material world, achieving things which we would struggle with today. As they had only partially developed from their etherical bodies into full matter, the name Lemuria, Latin Lemurs, was used, which means ghost of the departed. The lesson we can learn from this is simple. The further humanity deviates from the righteous path of respecting one another together with respect for their environment by being in harmony with nature, the more difficult their lives seem to become. When humanity rebels against nature, nature will rebel against us, quickening our descent into chaos. It is possible that one or more of the sets of stone tablets making up the Hall of Records have already been discovered, offering those who found them a valuable perspective of human history together with records possibly containing information about advanced technology, giving them the opportunity of replicating the same technology which ultimately led to a previous society's destruction. Beneath the sands of Saqqara, northwest of the Djosa Pyramid, near the ancient city of Memphis, is a labyrinth of underground passageways. Connected to these passageways are numerous alcoves containing 25 huge granite boxes weighing around 100 tons each. These boxes are made from a single piece of hard granite, 4 metres long, 2 metres wide and 3.3 metres high. 
granite which came from a quarry five hundred miles away. The staggering precision and craftsmanship is breathtaking, leaving any observer puzzled and perplexed as to how and why these boxes were made. The surfaces are totally smooth, a tolerance of within two ten thousandths of an inch. The sides are perfectly parallel, and each granite top weighs approximately 30 tons alone. A design and feat which would be almost impossible to replicate today. Rediscovered in 1850 by the French archaeologist Auguste Mariette, 1821-1881, who had the foresight to use the writings of Strabo, a Greek geographer from around the time of Christ, to locate the boxes. This gave Mariette clues enabling him to stumble across the entrance to the labyrinth, with all its underground passageways, a place which Napoleon had searched in vain for during his long extended expedition in Egypt. When Mariette first entered the Serapium, he reported the boxes to be already empty, looted in a previous age, left with their lids opened. The official explanation by mainstream Egyptologists suggests the boxes were sarcophagi, tombs for Apis bulls, placed there during the Ptolemaic period, mummified bulls locked away in these giant granite boxes for all time. The only problem with this explanation is the sheer size of the boxes. Mummified bulls have been recovered intact elsewhere, found in wooden tombs a fraction of the size. Bulls are usually mummified in the kneeling position and don't take up anywhere near the space we see inside these granite sarcophagi. They would only reach 1.6 meters from the ground. The other problem with this hypothesis is that no bulls were ever found in the boxes, not a single one. The word Serapium comes from the Greco-Egyptian god Serapis, a politically created religion designed to unify the Greeks and the Egyptians under the rule of Ptolemy I during the 3rd century BC, derived from the Egyptian gods of Osiris and Apis, along with attributes from Greek deities such as Hades and Dionysus. The cult of Serapis continued until 391 AD, when pagan religions were suppressed under Theodosius I. Under Ptolemy's deliberate policy to spread the cult of Serapis, a Serapium was built in Alexandria. The discovery of the Serapium at Saqqara altered the course of Auguste Mariette's life. He was initially commissioned by the Louvre Museum to find Syrian and Coptic manuscripts for the leaders of various monasteries. Unfortunately for Mariette, at that time, the English were going around snapping up everything before he could get his hands on it. Once his work on the Serapium was underway, Mariette devoted the rest of his life to Egyptology, making detailed notes on the Serapium, together with all his other findings. Unfortunately, in 1878, while Mariette was in France, the Nile experienced the greatest flood of the century, flooding the basement of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, where most of Mariette's notes and manuscripts were stored. His life's work 
lay under water for months, much of it destroyed beyond repair. The scale of the catastrophe took its toll on him, leading to his death three years later. As for the Serapium, no one has come up with a credible explanation. No one knows what they are, who made them, how and why. The only thing we can be sure of is that dynastic Egyptians did not possess that level of technology. Let me tell you that Marietti's first reports, the detailed discoveries of each sarcophagus, each grave, each new underground passage, all through several years, have completely disappeared. This again will not surprise you if you've been following my writings for a while. Everything significant on the Giza Plateau tends either to disappear, or if it can't be moved, to be closed to the public. Anton Gigel From the perspective of this book, it is possible that what many consider to be extraterrestrial beings from other planets could in fact be the henchmen of the Demiurge, archons and demons which support and reside in the dark recesses of the Cliffoth down the Tree of Death, an array of ungodly creatures resembling lizards, cyborgs, and red-eyed monsters who occasionally manifest within our physical reality and spectrum of visible light. Being the Prince of Darkness and the Lord of the Underworld, Satan, Saturn, rules over anything under the ground, including rocks and stones. This is one of the reasons why in traditional Judaism, stoning someone to death was a favoured punishment. In the late 1970s, Philip Schneider, a geologist and structural engineer, became involved in building underground military bases for the United States government. He stated that different races of alien beings lived deep underground and have been with us for thousands of years. Schneider also stated that the United States has 131 active deep underground military bases, and there are well over 1,400 in various locations all over the world. Many people are aware that billions of dollars are siphoned off from the US taxpayers' coffers each year, funneled into black budget and secret military operations by the internal mechanisms within the United States government. And because the US holds the world's reserve currency, they have a bottomless pit of funds to tap into. On September the 10th, 2001, the day before 9-11, the then Secretary of Defence, Donald Rumsfeld, admitted to losing $2.3 trillion of the Pentagon's money with absolutely no idea as to its whereabouts. In August 1979, Philip Schneider was working on a new deep underground military base down in New Mexico when the drilling machine his team was using repeatedly broke. His suspicion that something unusual had taken place was later confirmed when dozens of green and black beret soldiers showed up to investigate the tunnels for themselves. When his team was sent down to inspect the drilling machine, all hell broke loose. I was involved in building an addition to the deep underground military base 
at Dulce, which is probably the deepest base. It goes down several levels and over 2.5 miles deep. At that particular time, we had drilled four distinct holes in the desert and we were going to link them together and blow out large sections at a time. My job was to go down the holes and check the rock samples and recommend the explosive to deal with the particular rock. As I was heading down there, we found ourselves amidst a large cavern that was full of outer space aliens, otherwise known as large greys. I shot two of them. At that time, there were 30 people down there. About 40 more came down after this started, and all of them got killed. We had surprised a whole underground base of existing aliens. Later, we found out that they had been living on our planet for a long time, perhaps a million years. This could explain a lot of what is behind the theory of ancient astronauts. Anyway, I got shot in the chest with one of their weapons, which was a box on their body that blew a hole in me and gave me a nasty dose of cobalt radiation. I have had cancer because of that. Philip Schneider, 1995 Schneider was one of only a handful of people with level 1 security clearance, and possibly the only one who spoke out publicly about what he knew. He says there were nine underground bases in and around Area 51, employing 18,000 people in shifts, developing and testing technology shared by non-human entities. The act of speaking out publicly put Schneider in a compromising position. He was essentially breaking his official oath and therefore the law. This could have contributed towards his mysterious and premature death back in January 1996, a few months after going public with this information. Together with AI, this planet as a whole appears to be under some form of artificially stimulated geoengineering program, a covert project designed to interfere with nature's own balancing mechanisms. The reason for this is unknown. However, it could be part of an attempt to make the planet more favourable for the Demiurge and his entourage, while at the same time making it more difficult for the Divine Spark to exist in harmony with nature through its variety of expressions within the human genome. Extremely high quantities of aluminium, barium, strontium and other metals and chemicals are showing up in rainwater, surface water and air. This data matches data from other citizens and environmental groups testing nationwide as well as Europe. Dangerous levels of aluminium, barium and other contaminants have saturated most surface waters in much of the US and all NATO countries. The metals found exactly match the primary elements listed in a host of geoengineering patents. Recent soil testing and analysis reveals that soil pHs are now changing tremendously. A number of studies state conclusively that bioavailable aluminium is highly detrimental to countless organisms, including conifers. Geoengineering proof from NOAA geoengineeringwatch.org 
Whatever the country, capitalist or socialist, man was everywhere crushed by technology, made a stranger to his own work, imprisoned, forced into stupidity. The evil all arose from the fact that he had increased his needs rather than limited them. As long as fresh needs continued to be created, so new frustrations would come into being. When had the decline begun? The day knowledge was preferred to wisdom, and mere usefulness to beauty. Only a moral revolution, not a social or political revolution, only a moral revolution would lead man back to his lost truth. Simone de Beauvoir, French writer and intellectual. Oh, oh, oh.